Welcome to our presentation of the IT roots and developments of PLE for Win. The development of PLE for Win over the past five decades reflects the development of computer use in the engineering practice. The development outlined here focuses in particular on the form, structure, and interactivity of the program. The development of the program started in 1964 a year that is generally regarded as the start of computer use in the engineering practice. The beginning of the PLE for Win development is characterized by a question from our national Dutch gas company, Garsuni. The question involved the development of a methodology for the strength and stability analysis of underground pipelines. This in order to obtain approval for making dike crossings in the province of South Holland. In that province, the subsoils are weak predominantly clay and peat, and consolidation settlements occur all the time. After a thorough analysis of the problem a computer program was created with the then available resources. During the next five decades, the underlying geotechnical and structural model actually changed little, but the coat around the model is adapted to modern look and feel developments. Also from the engineering applications important extensions to the program have followed. In the same year 1964 IBM launched at the ACM IBM IEEE conference a program for the analysis of large spatial frames. FRAN became the basis of our first version. Lucky for us, that in that same year 1964 IBM opened a public computer center in Rayswig, near our office. The IBM 7094 mainframe required a whole hall. During a pipeline run, and in particular the matrix calculation, all 12 tape units started to turn around. But because a run mostly needed to start up several times because of input errors, the operator called in case of success, men, it's all happening. The input for a pipeline run in Fran was rather complex because the bars, in our case beam and spring elements, were collected in a number of modules. Each module accomplished its own partial solution. A lot of work was involved to specify the bars, that represent the soil springs. Especially to specify them in the right direction. Because, indeed, after each iteration these soil springs both in direction and stiffness, had to be adjusted. The stiffness of the soil springs had to be adapted to represent the nonlinear behavior of the soil. The output of FRAN was on chain forms from which manually the maximum loaded cross sections had to be determined. To facilitate the FRAN input, the pre program Hades was developed. Hades are short for the Dutch word Hagedis, meaning lizard. With the background idea that the backbone of a lizard represents the string of beam elements and the legs the soil springs. Programming in 1964 was not easy as we first had to learn and train the programming language, Fortran. The output of Hades was in the form of punch cards as well, which then had to be sorted into the correct sequence for the input of Fran. Such an input easily contained about 2000 cards, being a bin full. So for one pipeline analysis a draw with many bins was required. To give an idea, one iteration took about one night at the IBM mainframe, Nowadays it takes only a fraction of a second on a PC. After the maximum loaded cross sections were manually determined on the basis of the combination of axial force, bending and twisting moments, maximum top load, and maximum ground reaction the stress calculation of the cross sections could be done. To this goal, a post-program stress had been developed, taking into account the typical shell behavior at bends. All in all, the methodology had been developed and elaborated in a series of programs, but considering the huge amount of manual work involved, the use of the program was not very handy. Nevertheless a series of pipeline crossing have been analyzed with this first version program. The need for a more efficient and integrated program quickly became manifest. The approach of the methodology developed, became the root of the Dutch pipeline code NAN3650.
the call for a more efficient and integrated program was met with version 2. In fact, the three separate program blocks from version 1 were put together in a program called Polipo. This of course required upgrading of our know-how, as the calculation method in the FRAN program had to be equaled in the solver of this new version. In this context it is interesting to note that the development of subroutines of various levels were developed on an IBM 1130 computer of the importer of Volvo trucks in Raiswake. During the day they did their administrative work and at night we did their our software developments. To give an idea, the internal memory of this machine was 48 kilobytes. The assembled software parts were tested on the IBM mainframe, Computer power was scarce at that time. Still, the input and output had to be punch card oriented and input basically consisted of a series of commands, each followed by data. The output was still on chain forms. Nevertheless, there was already a manifest interest in the program and the first licenses were issued to Garsuni. Rakes Waterstat, the municipalities of Rotterdam and Amsterdam and an engineering office. Use of the software still had to be done on mainframe computers. However, running the program on a mainframe did not satisfy because of costs involved due to difficult portability. Whenever there was a new licensee the program had to be adapted to their operating system of the mainframe, in 1978 we were able to take over our Harris Mini computer from the airport SIP hall. And with the necessary changes and cutting up the source we actually managed to run Bilipo on that mini computer. This opened up new possibilities, because there were quite a few users with such a Harris computer and therefore there was no longer a need to adjust the program to the operating system of these computers. Gradually microcomputers came on the market. The first one we bought was a Gay Pro, working under the operating system CPM. And curious as we are, we asked ourselves, would Blippo run on such a microcomputer as well? And indeed after a few months it was successful. The performance was of course very bad, but that was no problem, because it was expected that much heavier microcomputers would come to the market. Not long afterwards we bought a Hoban a Dutch brand computer and also a CPM machine and the miracle happened, the program on the K-Pro actually ran without any changes, directly on this Hoban. Both microcomputers already had their own keyboard, making direct input into the computer possible. It was the end of the punch cards. The same applied to the output as it came directly to a floppy disk or could be written to a printer. The wheel printer was popular at that time. In 1980, the first IBM PC with MS-DOS operating system was launched and because the operating systems CPM and MS-DOS were quite similar, it was a small effort to convert Bilipo also to this PC. But the program was still a monoblock and strongly fragmented, making use and maintenance laborious and new developments could hardly be built in. The program, including the user interface, was still in Fortran. Thus, after 20 years the program needed renewal. The third version, named PLE MicroCAD, is developed under MS-DOS. An entirely new structure was chosen, focused on a closer relationship between user and program. The program had now been structured into six design features, which functions should be given input data and be executed in the prescribed order. In this new structure, the design procedures are separated and each has its own in and output. The idea behind this approach is the user can concentrate on each design function separately. Through the database results are integrated. The data was stored in a database and the appropriateness of results of each design feature, reviewed by the user. 
The user in the figure is divided into an input and an assessment lady, both being the same user. If the results of such function are in agreement with the expectations of the user, the next function could be entered. This is shown for the first design feature. In the example shown the user was satisfied with the results of the first function and proceeds to the second one, that starts with collecting data from the database from previous functions. Once a design function has been executed, the input and output data is blocked. In the example, results are considered to be incorrect and the function 2 is set back. The result data are deleted and the input data is open to adaptation. After alteration of the input, the function is processed anew and results accepted. This process continues until all design procedures are performed. High priority is given to the consistency of input 10 output data and the status table reports this for auditing reason. But after years of use of this version it came as well to its end, not so much in terms of technical content, but more in terms of the user interface. Users became used to other programs that have a more attractive, standard Windows graphical interface. And moreover support on MS-DOS comes to its end. So a new Windows-oriented program had to be developed based on new programming techniques, but most important, the program needed a new dress. The latest version, PLE for Win, is developed based on the principles of version 3. A roadmap is added, in which the status of each design function is displayed. Also it is not necessary to provide input to successive functions sequentially, although the functions have nevertheless to be processed in the correct order. In the screens extra features are built in, based on Windows options. However, the heart of the program is still based on Fortran because of the speed of processing. The user interface is written in vb.net. The program PLE for Win incorporates a long development period of about 50 years. Three versions have successively gone through to come to this fourth version, PLE for Win. Each of these versions reflects the development of the computer technology over those years and the program could grow and evolve with the highly increased processing power and capabilities of personal computers in general. Yet despite all the innovations, the original analysis of the behavior of underground pipelines in the 60s, has not changed. Still, the analysis of the strength and stability behavior of pipelines is based on the principles of geotechnical and structural engineering. But if you ask an artist what is your best work, he will always answer, my latest. That's where he is most proud of if it is finished. After a short while he will ask himself, what will be my next step? What will the next work look like and where are I aiming for? The future is still hidden in the clouds. 
only vague contours of PLE5 are visible within our ideas yet. A portable version? What would be the benefit to the user? A web version? A pipeline behavior problem is generally not solved by a team, spread around the world. More aiming at graphics-based data models for output and especially input, to avoid completing tables, something like the soil wizard now. Good idea. Or aiming at more functionality, for instance adding the effect of defects in existing pipelines. Growing functionality keeps the model alive. A necessity. From these deliberations about the future of PLE it follows that we have to bring the program closer and closer to the user. And that was the little story behind the IT developments of PLE. We hope you enjoyed it.